I once worked for a very demanding boss. He gave me not a few challenging assignments, often with tight deadlines and often with brutally high expected results. And I have to tell you, it is very difficult working under him. But he helped me uh, develop in me many of the qualities that I now try to apply as a worker. Now that I'm a boss myself, I find myself trying to live out and apply the qualities that I, I admired about my boss. At the same time, I also find myself rejecting the bad qualities that I hated about him that I know would make me a terrible boss. I found an interesting book about this kind of situation written by Robert Sutton. The book's title is as straightforward as it can get. Good boss, bad boss. As the title suggests, it talks about the qualities of a good boss and a bad boss. Of the 12 key beliefs that Professor Sutton observed most good bosses have, there are three particular beliefs that caught my attention. The first is that a good boss will be aware that he has a flawed and incomplete understanding of what it feels like to work for him. Uh, para bang sinasabi ito na hindi ko maintindihan kung ano ang pakiramdam ng mga taong nagtatrabaho under me. No? I cannot pretend to know. Unless, of course, tatanungin ko sila at magsasabi sila ng mga opinion sila na hindi ko sila pag-iinitan pagka hindi ko nagustuhan na narinig ko. Now, that's going to be tough for me. The second is that while a good boss strives to be confident enough to convince people that he is in charge, he needs to be humble enough to admit that he is often going to be wrong. It takes a lot of confidence to lead people to accomplish a major task, but I am only human and I don't have complete knowledge of external circumstances and how the future will turn out, and this guarantees that I will be wrong in many occasions. And I have to be humble enough to accept my errors, especially if not admitting them will result in bigger failure or will have a negative impact on the people I work with. The third is the awareness that because a boss wields power over others, he is at great risk of acting like an insensitive fool uh, and not realizing it. In the effort to accomplish things, I'm often oblivious to how my decisions impact people who work for me. Hindi ko masyadong napapansin yan. It's very likely that I have been ignoring their feelings and opinions all the while. I look back on bad decisions I've done in the past and I see now how I look like a fool to them. Yung itsura ko siguro, parang yung boss na ayaw mong paglingkuran. And so I have to be sensitive to that or else I'd always look like a fool. If you ran a survey on working people, they'd all say they want to work for an all-around great boss, you know, somebody with the ability to, and grit to inspire excellent work, commitment, and a sense of dignity. Uh, and for this to happen, a boss needs a lot of humility. I believe God gives favor to a boss who takes the effort to stay humble and resist the ever-present temptation to boss other people around. In the New Testament, the writer of the book of James validates this. He said, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. If you're the boss in your workplace, stay humble. Always aspire to become the model of a good boss that a lot of people would like to become. Remember, in the effort to become a good boss, faith matters too.